Hello, hello, this is Joe from Nerding Korea. I'm continuing our budget elves, this time with the Anthem Effect elves. Um, elves are really good in general, and with some anthems they get out of hand. So yeah, this is a great one to have. What about elves in general? Again, their main color is green, so they're the green exemplars. They have, they're really good at buffs, removal, um, ma having mana dorks, all kinds of things. They're a very, they're one of the top five for a good reason. So this is the fourth video in the elf series on elves that make anthem effects, as I said. All of these are $2 or less. So when I say budget, I always mean $2 or less. And this video is $2 or less. Sometimes I even get it cheaper. I did not manage to do that this time, unfortunately. We are now on Facebook. The page is called MTG Nerd in Korea, just like the channel. So I will be, uh, I will post regularly and I'll be available if anyone has any like comments or suggestions to make. So yeah, I always try to go with feedback from uh, people. Even like I did a whole series on Mardu. Someone said, oh, you should do a Mardu video. And I did a whole series. And yeah, even the pre-con series right now is someone suggested, hey, you should do a pre-con video. And I was like, well, that's going to be a series now, but so maybe I overdo it. Honorable mentions. So these are all 26 cents or less. We have Minthara, Merciless Soul, one and uh, white black. Orzov are 2 2, and she has Ward X, or X is the number of experience counts you have. Okay, Ward. I, everyone's, you know, there's problems with Ward, sure. At the beginning of your end step, if a permanent you control left the battlefield this turn, you get an experience counter. So that's nice. Um, creatures you control get plus one, plus zero for each experience counter you have. Okay, there's the real good thing right there. There's the real kind of money. Because this is, you, you build up the experience counters, right? It is not on her. So again, if she like leaves the battlefield and you bring her back to the battlefield, if you have some kind of recursion to get her back, you get you do not lose all those counters. They're not on her. They're on you. So that is very good. There's also multiple ways to get experience counters. So you can have other cards giving you experience counters before she goes down. And as soon as you play her, maybe you're also proliferating. You can proliferate these because they are counters. Um, that can be a huge damage boost to your like every creature you've got. Imperious Perfect for two and a green is a two two. Other elves you control get plus one plus one. You know, it's a very uh, standard um, kind of anthem. It's not bad. And for one green and tap, create a one one green elf uh, creature token. Yeah, all right. You know, it's it's okay. Uh, Ceylon Hermit, uh, three and a green for a 1-1. One, one. All Sapperlings get plus one, plus one. So this is kind of like an off, uh, an off Kindred bonus. So if you've got a Sapperling deck, um, Sapperlings are very easy tokens to make. So this could be really an effective strategy, but yeah, you'd have to kind of plan around a lot more. It also has Morph 3-3, three, three, so you can play it for three as a 2-2 two, two creature face down and then turn it over for uh, five which is getting expensive but when it turn is turned face up create four one one green sapling creature tokens which are automatically two twos so it costs you five and basically it gives you four sapling's that become two twos and it's a two two that's ten I mean you already had it as a two two so maybe net eight eight for five mana is not bad Eight attack power on the board and four extra creatures, ah, as well as a an anthem effect. Number five, uh, Thalon of Havenwood, green green for a two two. Each fungus gets a plus one plus one for each spore counter on it. So once again, we've got another one that's kind of like an off kindred anthem bonus, but it's something to keep in mind if you're going to do any kind of fungus, especially with like recent cards. I think a lot of fungus has gotten kind of better. So yeah, if you want to, I believe Necro Bloom is a fungus, right? Am I wrong? I feel like I'm wrong. Uh, anyway, I'm pretty sure there is a good fungus commander out recently. I can't think of it right now though, but 
It's, yeah, I can picture it, but I don't remember what it's called now. Not helpful. Uh, so for a black and a green Excel La Fungus card from your uh, graveyard, put a Spore Counter on each fungus on the battlefield. This is not only good, but it's so thematic is why I like it. So yeah, you're going to start exiling fungus from your uh, graveyard, and then you're going to like just boost everything, all the fungus on the yeah on your board you can also get token fungus pretty easily that will benefit from this of course you can't have it in the graveyard so you can't exile them unfortunately but so 28 cents number four uh dwyden uh glit leaf dane i always want to say guilt instead of glitz i don't know why two green green for a three four with reach that's not bad Four mana for a three fourth reach. Reach is very, very good to have kicking around. Other elves creatures you control get plus one plus one. Whenever it attacks, you gain one life for each attacking elf you control. So uh, there's especially Selesnia has a lot of like good elves and things you can do with like life gain synergies. So yeah, this is in my mind at least I. I'm, Usually someone comes along and is like, hey, this is a better idea, actually. But in my mind, I think Selesnia, like a life gain elf deck, this would be really strong. Uh, 107. Number 3. Elvish Clan Caller. Once again, green, green for a 1-1. One, one. Other elves you control get plus 1, plus 1. Doesn't sound that amazing. Okay, here we go. Four green green, so that costs six. That's high, right? That is high. I'm not gonna pretend it's not. Search your library for a card named Elvish Clan Caller, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. So you can just start like using your uh, your anthem effect creature to bring out another anthem effect creature to bring out two more anthem effect creatures. Like ideally you're gonna have something to cut that the cost of that ability down, but even at six, remember it costs two to cast. It is putting it directly into the battlefield, so it's basically casting it for you. Um, but yeah, so two of that is the actual cost of the creature. So four to go search your deck and uh, bring it out whenever you want. Not that bad. It's still not great. I mean, six is high, but it, especially if you can do this like. In for you need to do this in a format that is not singleton. So like Commander Brawl, no, those are out. But in in formats where you can have like four of these in your deck, you you bring you use this one to bring out the next one. The next turn you bring use those two to bring out two more, and then all of your elves have plus four plus four. That's your win con. That that that'll get the job done, I think. Anyway, forty six cents. Number two, Canopy, uh, bleh, Canopy, I can't talk today, Canopy Tactician, um, three and a green, so other elves you control get plus one, plus one, eh, tap to add three green, okay, this is three and a green for a three, three, not too bad, but like, being able to tap, a mana drop that taps for multiple mana is very, very good. And yeah, it's going to do your Anthem effect and tap for mana, which is just an amazing combination. Because your Anthem effect creature, you don't want that attacking. You don't want that getting taken out and your whole, t you know, all of your other creatures losing attack power because that's a... What you want is something that can just sit back and like make mana. And that's what this does. 197. Number one. Tolsmir, Wolf Blood. So four green white. High casting cost. Ah, yay. I, that's the one hang up I have with this. For three, four. Other green creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Other white creatures you control get plus one, plus one. And he can tap to create a legendary two, two green and white wolf creature token named Boja. It's legendary, so you can only have one at a time, but it's green and white. So it, that two, two is a four, four. As long as he's on the battlefield, it's a four or four. Um, so he's uh, he is he costs six for a three four, which isn't great, but he can just keep making 
this legendary creature that's going to be a 4-4 four, four, and you could just keep chucking it. You know, like, get, have some kind of source of haste and just every turn you can just keep throwing it at people. And then, yeah, if they don't take it out, then great, they're, they're doing damage. And uh, worst case scenario, what, they remove it? Like, just make another one. It, it's just, it's great having that, like, a 4-4 four, four token that can you can just, like, basically not worry about at all is really amazing. And yeah, I also like this Anthem effect better than most of the others because it is something where creatures can fairly easily benefit from one or both of them, right? It doesn't care about it being an elf, it doesn't care about it being a fungus or something like that, it's not a kindred thing, it just says green or white. And yeah, with most decks what you're most focused on is just the uh, color identity, right? You don't really care Unless you're doing a big kindred thing, which kind of limits you a bit. Um, this is just a lot more flexible, is what I'm saying. Anyway, 103. The list. Thalon of Havenwood, 28 cents. Dwyden of uh, Glitleaf... Sorry, Dwyden Gilt... Glitleaf Dane. I have so much trouble saying that. 107. Elvish Clan Caller, 46 cents. Never plays in like Commander or something. Kenopy Tactician, 197. Uh, Tolsimir Wolfblood, 103. I feel like I'm saying his name wrong. Also, Tols is the name of a professor I had in university. Really great professor. Um, so it kind of sounds like him. Anyway, take it easy.